Hi and welcome back to the House of Phoenix. It is Miss Phoenix here and we thought we would do an introductory video to the game Dead by Daylight. Uh, for most of you, you're already playing Dead by Daylight and we see you online quite a lot which is fantastic. However, I feel like we've skipped a step somewhere along the line so although this might not be a video for you, as you know, we are a family of gamers. Um, my two sons and the lovely shenanigans, um, Freeze and Cello, also plays with us. We enjoy our time together. You know, my, my kids have grown up, so we're no longer playing board games and watching Yu-Gi-Oh! or doing duels and different things like that. We're now into gaming as, they, as they've grown up, and we want to encourage you to encourage others to play games like Dead by Daylight with you because it has changed our lives over the years and that might sound a little bit cheesy but I know of a lot of families out there where some kids, maybe some of their parents or uncles etc, they all game online whether it's Xbox, Playstation, Switch, whatever. They all game but very rarely do they game together. And I think that is such a huge, huge shame. You know, we all need personal space and time, and I completely appreciate that. However, I think there is also time that you should share this experience and just have a really good laugh. And so you will hear me talking about it a lot because I'm quite passionate about that side of things. You know, Dead by Daylight is one of the games that we really, truly love because we can pick it up and we can put it down, we can play together which is amazing. So this online video, uh, introductory video rather, is for you to share with perhaps others who might want to have a bit of better idea about Dead by Daylight and I really I just want to go over some of the things to be aware of. The, the menus and different options that you have to make it a little bit more easier. So for example, as soon as you go into the game, you have your daily rituals, all right? Now they could be for the killer, or they could be for the survivor. Have a little read of these. You don't have to focus on them, but they are a good way to earn extra blood points, which we'll talk about a little bit later, should you wish to. As you saw there, I deleted one. I wasn't particularly gonna do that daily ritual. You can delete one per day, and it will give you another one. It might be something you can do, it might not be. I don't play as a killer a lot, so those ones I tend to ignore. But blood points are really super useful throughout the game to upgrade your characters, if you like. This is your main menu, alright? You've got your help and tutorials. I'll be honest, I've never used it. Archives, which we are going to go over just a little bit later. Play as a survivor. That's what we, we will be focusing on. And then the killer. And then obviously a custom game. Again, I haven't actually played a custom game, so we might do that at some point. I think that'll be interesting. And of course, a store. No game is complete without a store where you can go and spend some actual real hard money on some more bits and pieces, which I have to say we don't do. You have your friends down the bottom there. You can invite people to play, which is also really incredibly useful. So focusing on playing as a survivor, this is something that we tend to do for the vast majority of the time. Dark Hero and Willy Bison, they tend to do much better as killers than perhaps myself and Freezing Cello. So here you can see this is the survivor screen. I've already got a character in place. If you're new to the game, you might not have a character there, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So for each character, each game rather, you can have four players, four survivors, and these little plus signs, you can click on these and invite a friend to play. Going up, you've got the Oryx cells. Again, this is something you spend money on, and you can use these cells then to buy outfits and different bits and bobs for your characters. You don't need to do that. You have iridescent shards, which you can earn through gameplay, and they will be spent and I'll, again I'll show you a little bit later on in this video on how you can spend the iridescent shards and we will also go over how you gain iridescent shards which is basically your player progression not your character progression but your progression as a player throughout the whole game 
Next is blood points. Now, for me, these are the most important thing to be aware of. You need these blood points in order to buy items for your character. Those items are perks, so skills that they can use in the games, or those items can be toolkits, you know, handy things that you can actually physically use in the game, or perhaps offerings that will um, give you a little, little bit of extra edge or another way to earn extra points. Then we have your player level. So this is your level overall the entire game, including your role as a killer. Um, and you can see this is a level 75, but I've already actually reacted to a devotion one, which is because I play so much. Then you have your survivor rank. So you have survivor rank and you have killer rank. So at the end of every game, depending on how well you've played, you get pips, which you can see in the top right of that black box there. So the better you play, the more pips you get, and if you're really bad, you lose pips. But as soon as you fill up that pip bar, so to speak, you rank up as a survivor. And I think the whole concept is that it helps determine who you go against um, as a killer or who you are with as a team. Looking a little bit below that, you can see that you have these L and R things, and that means your L3 and R3, which is clicking down your sticks, and that is a very quick way to change your character. You can see that I've just changed over to Jeff. Personally, I don't like this way of doing it. There is another way which I'm going to show you in a little minute. But is if you want to very quickly switch before going into games and things, you can do that. Then you have character information, okay, which is just pressing right on your D-pad. Have a read of these. I actually found some of these quite interesting. There's a nice little um, backstory for each character, and it tells you about the perks, the three perks. Um, that is for that particular character. Each character set has three main perks and they all do different things. Some of them you will love, some of them you will hate. Try them, okay? You don't know to try it. There's some that I've tried and I quite frankly will never use again. <laughs> and again, you can hit L and R um, to scroll over to different characters. Next you have your archives and we're going to come back to this a little bit later because it's a little bit more complicated you have your rift fragment progress and you also have um, your just your basic your blood point archives which is the different challenges you can select it's very useful though for getting extra blood points so this is how I choose my survivor character I like to know what my options are and so this going on to this bit here you can actually see who you have unlocked because they're all nice and beautiful and colorful and further down the ones that are grayed out like this are the ones that you have not unlocked now you can buy these if you click onto them it gives you information about that character and it tells you how you can buy it so for example quentin which is one i've just clicked on it's given me the information and it tells me about the perks but over here on the right hand side you can see it would cost me 500 or excels which i have zero of because i don't spend money and so i won't be buying him at this point unless he becomes available in a different way which again i'm going to show you in a minute but before you buy a character do look at the perks unless you like me you want to unlock everybody um you might be a perk person so have a look. So this particular person, Adam Francis, his character, again, backstory and perks. If you look on the right hand side, you can spend four excels or you can spend some iridescent shards, 9,000 to be precise. And I happen to have over 9,000, so I could actually buy Adam Francis if I really wanted to. However, there is somebody else that I've had my eye on because I really wanted them. Um, somebody else recommended to them to me, and that's Laurie. I, I wanted to try out her perks, and so uh, again, or excels across the top if you wanted to spend money. And then this is the Shrine of Secrets. Just very quickly, these are different perks that you could actually buy, and they become available on the Blood Web for all your characters. But they do cost iridescent shards. Okay, not blood points, iridescent shards. So that's just something to be aware of. It is quite useful if there's a particular perk that you've been dying to get for your characters. So that is your survivor selection. You can see all the different ones I've got. They're all, they're all different levels. And you level your characters up. 
by spending money, well not spending money rather, <laughs> spending blood points on the blood web which we're going to go over. Alright, but that is those numbers there in the bottom left corner of each character. That's how you gain levels, okay? To begin with, you will um, be level 1 and you will have no perks etc. And you can re-up your characters as well, but bear in mind, just very quickly, if you re-up a character, you lose all of your perks, all of your offerings, and all of your items, so any toolkits you've purchased, anything like that, you will lose them when you re-up. You can re-buy stuff, but it's going to cost you more. So then we're going to go on to the inventory. Right here, this is the best, but these are your perks. And you can see that I have a few perks here for Bill, and I already have some of my favourite ones selected, and these I've bought through the blood web. Borrowed time, yep, unbreakable. I'm all about surviving and leader. I'll help them out a little bit if I can. But so that is your perks. I've actually got two pages. And again, I, I know I keep saying it, try not to stick to the same perk. Try and switch it up a little bit if you can, because you don't know, obviously, if something is good until you've actually tried it. And in fact, when we go back to the archives a bit later, things like plunder is instinct here, you will need. So it's a good idea to try it out to know how it works because you will need it to complete some of the challenges. And in inventory for the actual items, again, you're going to need some of these. You will need toolkits and you will need first aid kits in order to complete some of the challenges in the archives. Now I know it sounds like it's getting a bit complicated, so skip it if you're not interested in learning blood points. That's absolutely fine. But there's things in here that will just simply help you to get out. Toolboxes clearly would help you to fix things a little bit quicker. Once you've selected a toolbox, you can add some little bits onto it to make it either stronger, last longer, a little bit quieter, all different things. Um, have a little read of each bits and bobs. Be careful, some of them aren't that great and really not worth the money spending on them, the blood points rather, but try it. Try it and see. And then lastly, you have your offering. We talked about offerings a little bit earlier. I love the ones that give you extra blood points. Okay, the ones I tend to look at are the ones that will take you to a particular map or increase the chance of a particular map or they might increase the chance of sort of hooks spawning further apart or maybe you spawn further away from the killer. Um, but a lot of them are to do with blood points. Um, and they, but they are based on certain skills. So just be aware, just have a little read. And there is a nice special one at the moment, the Ghastly Ghetto, I think it is. That gives you lots more blood points, which is really nice. And that's a fourth anniversary one, courtesy of Dead by Daylight. Try to f use all your perks. Try to make sure have something in your inventory and have something in your offering because it will benefit you even if you don't get to use it. Okay, the different colours, and we can go over this again at a different time in a different video, but purples are the best. Okay, greens, a little bit, okay, and the beige ones, use them at will because they're not that great. It's like a just a little colour coding system, and you can see that actually on the perks, where the beige perk has got a one dash, and the purple perk has got a three dash right there, so they sort of grade up in colours if you like and you can all oh yes don't forget you can get keys keys are super if you want to jump out the hatch and maps to show you where you're going it's awesome try it out don't miss out but you can only get these items by shopping if you like on the blood web and I like to save up my points as you can see I've got over 700,000 at the moment they do max out at a million so don't let it hit that million mark because no matter what you do after that point, you can have the most amazing game in the world. You won't get the blood points because you've already maxed out. So spend. I'm going to spend a little bit on Bill here. And I'm not much of a careful shopper. There are certain things I like. I tend to look for the best perk because you have to work your way from the centre red dot to the perk. You have to follow the pathways. And make your way all the way down as you can see i really want that perk so that's one i'm going for 
once I've got the perk that I want, Unbreakable, which is awesome, try it, you can see right there there's a bit, a little bit of black darkness coming in, and that is the darkness that takes away items. So if you want something in particular, go for it pretty darn quickly. That has to be your first priority because every time you click on something, the darkness will come and take something else, as you can see right there. So let it take what you don't want, obviously. Um, and if you are short on blood points, then maybe if, if there's nothing in particular, spend them on the lowest costing ones. And you can see as I go on each one, that one was 5,000, as was that one because they're greens. And then these ones over here, that one's only 3,000. So, you know, pick and choose, but follow that one I can't click on because I haven't followed. I've got a gap right there, so I have to choose that one and look down it. The darkness has come and taken that end one from me. I didn't get to it in time. As soon as you finish it, it takes you to the next level and gives you a whole new blood web that you can follow through and you can spend some more blood points on. Okay, so that is your loadout. Those are all the items that you gain and that was through the blood web that we just looked at. One thing to be aware of, and we'll go over this in the gameplay video, is the fact that perks you get to keep forever as such um, until you re-up of course um, but items such as toolboxes you lose if you die in a game and you don't make it out the gates of the hatch you lose those items unless you have something particular that you buy on the blood web that stops you from losing the items when you die your offerings also disappear at the end of the game and clearly if you run out of blood points you can't buy anything else so you're going to have to play the game in order to buy um, to earn more blood points to play the game. If you're choosing a new character, so here I've actually just bought Cheryl. I know that when you have a new character you have no perks, no tools, no nothing. So as soon as I've purchased her, the first thing I do is I go straight to the blood web. And you can see it's a level one and it tells you all about the fact that you have no perk slots bar one. I've saved a few of my blood points so I literally have a shopping spree. Okay, and I, the first one's just buy any old thing. You've got to get through it. You've got to take everything off that blood web in order for it to complete and go to the next blood web. If it, the, um, the darkness doesn't come until a little bit later on in the blood web, which is a little bit awesome, I guess. And as you go through, you can see as I'm buying stuff. There we go, there's a perk, there's some items, I'm now up to level 5, which means I'm going to unlock the second perk slot. So the next one I believe is level 10, you get perk slot 3, and then it's level 15. So it's worthwhile if you think you're going to be unlocking a character, save up some of your blood points, but again, don't give over the million mark because it caps out at that point. But yeah, save and then you can have a shopping spree. There's nothing worse than starting a game with no perks, no items. It makes it a little bit harder for you. So try to get what you can. If you're very new to the game, then I would suggest perks that help you see other team members and perhaps even to see where the killer is so that you can find your way around the map and you can also see where your teammates are. Uh, and obviously if you see where the killer is you can go in the opposite direction um, which you'll see me do quite a lot in my games I have to admit so there we go I've reached level 10 so I've unlocked the third perk slot and now it says you can see the entity or I call it the darkness um, is going to start taking things here it's just reminding me the three main perks that Cheryl has and you can see I've got my three perk slots so I can go through and I can choose which ones I would like to use for Cheryl. This is another Cheryl one and somewhere else, we have a little look, there we go, there's another Cheryl. So my three perk slots I've opened up, I've now got Cheryl's three perks to try out and when I get to level 15 I can then um, unlock the fourth and final perk slot. So at this point, I've got an invitation from Freeze and Cello to join her in a game. So here we are, that's Freeze and Cello and myself waiting. And you can see in the bottom right hand corner, there's like a scratch mark thing. 
All right, and that tells us when we've both um, readied up. So at the moment I've readied up, there's a tick under my number eight, and you can see one red line in the bottom right hand corner. So uh, Freezing Cello is sorting out her perks and any items that she would like to bring along as soon as she's readied up. But for now, there are two red lines in the bottom right corner and because we're part of a team, it's now looking for a match for us to join. But uh, we're gonna go back to Bill right now because we haven't looked at customization. So here you can see he can then change his hat or his jackets or his trousers basically. We have only got two choices for Bill unfortunately. A rather snazzy jumper or a rather nifty jacket. So we're going to stick with the jacket I think. And at the bottom here you can see I call them fobs. I don't actually know what they are. They're like little keychain thingies. So you gain these through the, um, I think it's the rift fragment progress thingy. Um, but yeah, that's something else that we will be looking at again in a second. They don't actually do anything that I'm aware of, they just look nice. I mean, Dark Hero says it's like a, a status thing. There are some ultra rare ones, so if you have ultra rare ones, then people know that you're a really good player. Um, I just pick them because they look nice, if I'm honest. So let me know if you think you have an idea about what these actually do, if anything then that'd be fantastic. You can click on them to have a bit of a closer look. But again, for me, it's aesthetic. It's just what it looks like. Um, other than that, I'm not particularly interested. I want to survive and get out of the map. Again, you can down the bottom, you can click left on your D-pad, check what daily rituals you have, so you know what you have to complete on the map. And this is where we talk about challenges okay so on the right hand side going back to the archives you have compendiums or tomes and they're a bit like the blood web you have to work your way across there are some that look like little brains i don't know all the thing from harry potter that golden snitch thing that flies around um they're for the survivors or you have skulls which are for the killers and each one gives you a challenge and you have to press and hold the button to select that challenge make a note of it if you have to and obviously don't forget that you also have your daily ritual challenge that you could be doing as well but you have to work your way across to the other end once you get to the other end you unlock the next tome which you can see up in the right hand corner I'm on the third tome and I'm trying to get across to unlock the fourth now this second one you can see I've started from the left over here and I've gone all the way I've completed all these challenges in blue to get to the end which has unlocked the third tome, okay? And then if you need to, or you want the extra blood points, you can go back to previous tomes and complete some of the challenges, but they still have to be linked. You can't just choose any random unhighlighted one. It has to be following the line still, okay? And again, you can switch between playing as a killer or as a survivor, so you can complete and get blood points from both of those categories which will add up to your totals up there. So for the sake of this video, we are going to switch back to Cheryl. Um, and this is after I've accepted an invitation from Freeze and Cello. So we are actually now in the same lobby together. And you have to bear in mind, if you haven't both readied up by pressing Y, even at this point, you can actually go through and you can still make some changes. You can either change your character or you can go onto the blood web and spend a few points if there's something in particular that you're searching for. You can also add equipment. You can see there that Freezing Cello has got a first aid kit with her. And at this point, I'm not taking anything in. And another thing to remember, and we'll probably cover this a bit more in the gameplay video, is the fact that, as I said before, you lose items that you take in if you don't escape, okay? But equally, if you go into a map and you find an item in a chest or you find an item on someone's dead body, which is a bit unfortunate, but it does happen, um, and then you escape, you gain that item. So sometimes I like to think of it as another kind of shopping spree. If I don't, if I haven't had a good run of games and I think I'm going to lose it, 
I will go in with our items and I will have a little rummage around in the chests and I will come out with an item instead if I'm lucky rather than lose something. But to be honest with you, with the amount of stuff you unlock on the blood web, it's highly unlikely that you're going to get through all of it before you're ready to re-up and by which point we've already told you, you lose all of it again, okay? Now you don't have to re-up when you reach level 50 for a character, you can just keep buying through the blood web and you can just keep um, using bits and pieces, but you get the higher level you are on the re-up scale, if you like, I don't know what the technical term is, um, the better the items on the blood web are for you, apparently, so it is in your interest to re-up. I like to have a little look when we're usually waiting for a game to start. We've both read it up as you can see and we're looking for a match in the bottom right hand corner. Um, you've got the little tally sign there which is uh, letting us know. But you can spend what you've got, you can change different bits and pieces. What you can't do is you can't look at your daily rituals once you've read it up and you cannot change your challenge on the archive. Okay, so just bear that in mind. If you do want to change it quickly, just unready by pressing Y to cancel and then do the changes you need to do and then press Y to ready up again. As soon as the game has found a match for you, no matter what you're doing, it will actually just stop you dead and take you through to the game, which you are um, going to see now, apparently. So yeah, so the Dead by Daylight lovely people have found us a game, or the software has, and we're in a lobby with another guy, Steve is the character, so love Freezing Cello has um, Blesser leveled, leveled up, readied up for us, and again, again you can see in the bottom right hand corner the little tallies, two of us have readied up, there's one grey vertical tally which is Steve as we can see because there's no tick above his head so he has not readied up and you have a diagonal tally okay so there's a black vertical that means we've only we've got a player missing a survivor missing and the killer who is the diagonal tally he's not readied up either now once it gets to um, four players being in the lobby we have a bit of a countdown timer that starts off. Again, you can unready at this point if you need to change anything, or you can leave the lobby, but that's not very nice. Don't do that if you can help it. So here we've got a fourth player has joined us, and hopefully they're already up soon. But you can see the countdown in the bottom right-hand corner. There we go. Everybody's readied up, apart from the killer. But at some point, regardless of whether the killer readies up or not, it will just take us through to a game, okay? So bear that in mind. Once you get into a game, sometimes if the killer is not paying attention and they haven't read it up at all, you can be running around that map for a little while and the killer is quite often just, well, not quite often, that's a lie, um, is sometimes just stood there not actually doing anything because the game started without them being aware. Maybe they've popped off to go and pick up a takeaway or, I don't know, grab a cup of coffee if it was me. But it's all readied up now, and the next loading screen, just to make you aware, this is showing all of the offerings that people have brought with them. Sometimes you have an offering that doesn't flip around, it's kind of, it doesn't show you basically, and you need to be aware then that is probably a killer offering, and they don't want you to know what it is. So, be aware. Alright, and we'll talk about hexes and totems and offerings for the killer in our gaming video. But right now we are stuck on the lovely loading screen from Dead by Daylight, which is awesome. But as I said, um, we are going to be doing another video, whether you like it or not, uh, which is going to be focusing on actual gameplay and just going over very briefly what can happen during a game and the idea, the sort of the goal of the game, if you like. And again, this is for people who are completely new to Dead by Daylight. If you played Dead by Daylight, maybe watch it. There might be a couple of things in there that you weren't aware of. Actually, you can bear in mind for future games because it makes it a little bit easier for you. Um, and we're also working on another tips 
video for you. So the main key thing as far as I'm concerned is teamwork and I know I sound like a stuck record but it is absolutely key teamwork all right. Now the very basic level you need to fix the generators to, to operate the gates or power up the gates. There are two gates for you to get out of okay and you can see here I'm working with Steve or I was um, to try and fix the generator and you can see in the left hand side bottom left there's five generators that we need to fix in order to get out I'm not going to go through the whole game with you because as I've already said we're going to do a gamers video and we would really love some input on that so if anyone's got any ideas of things that they would really like to see then let us know we cannot cover everything there are so many perks you can see my perks in the bottom right hand corner and which ones are activating there um, and there are so many different variables within each game it's impossible for us to cover everything in one video but we're going to have a rough um, guide for you so once you fix all the generators we're going to skip through to show you you need to head through to the gates and you can see it says in the bottom left corner find the exit this is one of the exit gates and someone's already prepped it for me so I can pull the lever with my friend and we can get out keep going once you've opened that gate don't stop you have to run for a bit further and if you miss the gate and you are the last one on the map unless you well actually Freeze and Cello has a key as well which is super useful because the killer has apparently shut the hatch it will make sense when we do the gamers video but there is a hatch that opens up at the end of the game and Shannon has a key to get out. So perfect. I just wanted to quickly show you at the end of every game you get these lovely screens. You might not get an achievement as I did there. But here you can see the numbers going up. That's how many blood points I got in a match. And I got it for objective, survival, altruism and something else. I missed it off the end there. And it depends on how well you've done okay so this is my player level that just went up and then you can see overall on the scoreboard how we did as a team and of course the killer is at the bottom there we always like to give props where props are due so don't forget you can click on the thumbs up if you want to and obviously don't be negative unless someone has been particularly awful in a game and um, have done so deliberately bad playing is not an issue unless it's done deliberately okay it's all about learning and working together so that is it from the house of phoenix for this introductory video i'm sorry if you are an avid dead by daylight player and this is all old news to you but again i reiterate this is for you to share with someone else someone who is likely to join you on a game of dead by daylight as a new player someone like me who may not have or who may not have originally had any idea of what any of this meant okay give them a little bit of a heads up they can watch this video from front to back stop pause fast forward whatever they want to do but help them okay and get them to have a little bit of fun with you let us know what you think please send us some constructive thoughts and things that we could do for future videos we look forward to seeing you online again soon please take care it is Miss Phoenix from the House of Phoenix.